everyone welcome to my channel welcome back to my channel my name is Tamara and here we talk all things social work I try to share all the knowledge that I have or the things that I've received or found out or news on this channel um, so if you could please first like comment please subscribe I'm trying to grow my little community so I would definitely appreciate that um, but without further ado we are going to get into the video so in this video we are going to talk about the pros and the cons of being a veterans affairs social worker. So I did work for the VA, I'm, I'm, for the purpose of this video, VA stands for veterans affairs, okay? So I'm going to, I'm going to say that a lot in this video. So VA, veteran, veterans affairs, okay? So I work for, for the veterans affairs um, as a social worker um, for their hospital unit like a medical social worker one of them that's a medical social worker because you can be dialysis to be a medical social worker so to be more specific in the hos in their hospital unit um as a social worker so i did work for them before i no longer work um for the va but there's a lot of social workers that i see that that's something that they want to do that's something that they want to pursue so since i have done it and i've actually received multiple like numerous emails to interview for certain positions I feel like I kind of know a little something so <laughs> I kind of want to share with you all what I know a little bit about my experience just a couple things to consider when applying for the VA um and yeah just some things to consider so the first one is we're going to get into the pros so and this is in no particular order I was just writing it down as I was thinking about it so the first pro is that they are supposed to match your pay um, so for the VA, they do like a GS system. So full disclosure, when I was in the VA, when I worked for the VA, um, I was going to say when I was in the VA system, when I worked for the VA, I was a GS-11, right? No previous experience or anything. I was a GS-11, step one, I believe. I will link down um, their pay scale. And it's different for your locality too, where you live. So make sure you look into that. Um, so yeah, it was like a GS, GS-11 step one. So there's different steps that you can have and, and with the step increase, your pay increases. So let's say, for instance, you wanna apply. And if you're licensed, I believe, especially LCSW, you should automatically be applying for GS-11. You should not be, you know, GS-11 or higher, okay? I think LMSW, I think you can apply for GS-11 too. I'm not sure, but I would definitely say licensed clinical social workers, you should be applying for GS-11 and above, okay? Um, but anywho, so yeah, so they should match your pay. So for instance, let's say a GS-11 step one, let's say that that pay starts at, let's say 65,000, but let's say a, a year. So let's say where you're at right now, you're making 68,000. If you submit your pay stubs, pay, pay stubs and show how much you are making, they are supposed to match that. So let's say GS 11 step one is 65,000. And let's say GS, is it GS two or GS three? Let's, I'll just say, um, I think it's GS two. GS two is 68, let's say that's 70,000, right? You will go ahead and they will put you to 70,000 because they are not supposed to um, pay you less than what you're, supposed, what you're making now. They are not supposed to pay you less than what you're making now. It has to be either equal to or more. So just remember that if, if you're making more than what, you know, you're applying for, if you're making more than let's say like, yeah, let's say you're applying for a GS-11, let's say step three, and you're making more than that, submit those pay stubs, talk to HR, and you should either be making the same amount or more, okay? We're not decreasing, we're increasing. So remember that. Make sure you look into that. Make sure you look into how much um, they say it will be, but it should also be listed on the job description. It should say, um, usually they'll put the lowest, which is like whatever GS position that is. So let's say, cause some of the job descriptions will say like, um, this is for like GS nine through 11. So that low pay is for gonna be for that GS nine. Um, so just be just be aware of that. Look at the, look at the pay. Um, and yeah, just make sure you submit your pay stubs, talk to HR, but you should not be making less than what you're making prior to starting. You should be making either, either the same amount or more. So, sorry, but <laughs> that was kind of a long explanation for that one. So yes, so that's number one for pros. Two for pros is elevation. 
One of the things that excited me about working for the VA was that there was like a plethora of different departments that you can move, you can move throughout. So I worked in a hospital area of social work. Um, I had a friend who worked in dialysis. They had long-term care, nursing home area. They had like suicide prevention. They had substance abuse. Um, what other areas? There were just so many different areas. So if you got tired of like working in one area or not even just tired, let's say you just wanted to change, right? You could go into another, um, you know, area in the department. Um, so that's something um, good as well. And also the elevation, as long as you're doing whatever, you know, doing what you're supposed to do when you receive your, um, I don't know what they call them, appraisal or evaluation, you should be going up in steps. So I know a lot of social workers who work for the VA who are making over $100,000, if not more. So that is something that is awesome that you can continuously, you know, increase GS11, GS12, GS13. Um, some social workers and some fields, I will say of social work, there's not a lot of us that can make over 100,000 plus, but in the VA system, you can definitely make over $100,000. So. so they match your pay, the elevation moving up. I already talked about the numerous departments or different departments that you can um, and they even have a home health section too, because I did home health for a little bit, so they also have home health. So there's so many different areas that you can move through without the VA. So that's also a pro. Um, also too, they have, I think, is it three retirement systems? I wrote down three and I can't remember the name of all of them. I'll link some of that stuff down below. Um, but there are three retirement systems. There is a plethora of retirement systems for you to choose from. <laughs> now there's one retirement system that um you cannot opt out of because there were some people i remember when i was um working for the va they were like can we opt out of this i don't want this i already have my other timer and they're like nope you can't opt out like you have to have this so for some people that's a good thing for some people that's not that's not a good thing so they're like i don't need this to come out my check i already have a retirement here retirement there. i want to keep this extra money but they're like nope it has to come out so but there are different uh different retirement systems so you don't have to worry about that and also speaking of retirement systems benefits there's, um, you know, medical benefits, all types of benefits. Um, I can't really speak to the medical benefits because I did not use their benefits. My husband's active duty, so I, I have TRICARE Prime. So I, did, I have all the jobs that I've worked, I don't use it. I've never used their benefits. So um, in regards to medical. So I can't really speak to that, but I've heard that it's really good. I will leave some information with some links down to the websites below if you are interested in that. But I did want to say benefits. It's a federal job, so it definitely comes with, you know, good benefits. And I think going back to my hospital social work days, I believe that one of um, their insurances is Blue Cross Blue Shield. And I will say that Blue Cross Blue Shield is one of the best insurance companies. Um, even when I was doing um, private, pa private practice therapy, Blue Cross Blue Shield was, was like the highest um the insurance that reimbursed the highest, like they had the highest reimbursement rate. That's an awesome insurance. So just something to think about, but if you are um, married to someone in the military, or if you have your own like little benefits, your own um, situation going on, I don't believe that you don't have to use your benefits or medical benefits, but that's just a pro for someone who's interested. Um, and also too, they will pay for social workers to go back to school. Um, yeah, they will pay for social workers to go back to school. You have to be employed there for at least a year, though. So you cannot do it until you've been there for a year. And then they will um, pay for you to further your education. Social workers is listed underneath, like, the medical professionals. So all the medical professionals, um, they consider, like, of course, psychologists, um, the doctors, everybody were listed underneath there. So they will pay for us to go back to school. Um, and let's see. Oh, and transfer jobs. If you want to transfer a job, um then you know you should be able to transfer you know do a transfer from your your one va to another va so that shouldn't be too hard so you know of course your job is transferable so now let's get into these cons because <laughs> i've been trying to hold back because i didn't want to mush mush the two but okay so let the cons um may give a oh okay yes so i had to read listen i have um doctor's handwriting maybe that's why i'm getting getting going to my uh getting my doctoral degree all my handwriting is so horrible i might show y'all one day in the video but it's, it's bad sometimes i'm looking at my whole hair like what the? it's bad how real difference but anywho um so one con they may give you pushback when it comes to matching your pay that's why i try to emphasize um number one and put an emphasis on number one um they give you pushback you push back 
do not leave your current position unless that is something that you just feel like you absolutely positively want to do you have to do um i would strongly advise against it but if you feel comfortable with leaving the job that you're at to go to the VA and make less when you have documentation to prove otherwise, I say don't do it. It might take them a little bit longer to um, give you a final offer because usually they give you a, like a first offer. I forgot what that's called, first offer. But with that first offer, they even say, do not, uh, don't quit your job. Don't, um, you know, make any decisions. This is just like a preliminary offer, right? So when you get that first offer, y'all, Stay put. Don't be like, I'm out of here, y'all. Like, don't do that yet. Wait until you get your final offer with your, with your uh, start date, okay? Um, but yeah, they, that might delay it a little bit. But hey, if that equals more money, more pay, um, <clears throat> I would do it. Because let's say you're going back and forth, you're negotiating, right? Let's say that GS11 step one. But now, actually, you, you've been bumped up. Some people have been bumped up to step five because of the pay difference. So I think it's worth it. Because when you start at that GS11, let's say step five, when you get your, um, your evaluation and you're going to go up and pay, you're going to go up to the next step, you know. So I say it's worth it. They give you pushback. It's okay. Push them back. Submit that documentation. And just wait. It'll be worth it. Um, okay. So also, so when you want to transfer within different departments, so let's say, so I worked in the hospital, right? Let's say I'm like, oh, I kind of want to change. I don't really want to do hospital social work anymore. I would love to do like long-term care nursing home, right? But there's already people, you know, they already are fully staffed. They don't really need a social worker in that area right now. Or, you know, someone trying to move over there. You may have to wait for an opening. You may have to wait for a position. You may have to wait to be able to go to another department. You know, you have to wait for an opening to um, be available. So that's just one thing to, to think about. It is awesome that you can make lateral moves and you can just work different departments. But you also sometimes have to wait for that opening um, to come up. So um let's oh that's another thing too so the VA that I worked at they didn't have a lot of cross training so some VAs and I like I said I'm not speaking for all of them so I've only worked at one um they either have lots of cross training where there are social workers that can work here work there work you work anywhere and then there are some VAs like where I worked at where there was really like one person who knew how to do everything um and I think that's a con because what if what happens if that one person leaves and nobody knows how to do other things? I feel like within any organization, honestly, that is a bad thing. So um, as a social worker going to the VA, I would definitely, if you're able to try to cross train and, and work in different areas, do so. Um, sometimes they'll ask for people to volunteer to cross train to help other area, areas. If you feel comfortable with doing that, I would definitely try to cross train and do that. I kind of have to laugh at this, uh, the next one that I wrote because <laughs> it's just funny to me, but I wrote down 1990 Microsoft Word. So, <laughs> um, how, to, how can I say this uh, nicely? So their system is a little outdated, okay? When I was working there and I was looking at the paperwork, I'm like, this reminds me of, of military orders. Like the paperwork is not, it's definitely not, um, their system is a little outdated. That's the only thing. Um, if you're used to something kind of high tech and let's say electronically, uh, faxing things and not having to fax so much paperwork and do, mm -mm. now I don't know if different VAs are doing something differently, but I would say the one that I worked for, we had to hand fax stuff. There was stacks and stacks of paperwork. Um, people kept all the paperwork and even some of the, um, like the documentation, it just reminded me of 1990 Microsoft. Like it just wasn't coming from one medical organization that was really pretty like quick on the draw. They were pretty like innovative when it comes to like documentation. So yes, their system to me is a little outdated. Um, if that's something that you can get past and you know, hey, but just don't be, don't be shocked because it's a lot of hand faxing. Um, there is not to me very up to date, which I'm hoping for the sake of everybody that they will update <laughs> their system. Um, I believe that they were supposed to be doing that. So I hope they do that soon because I was just like, mm, this is, um, this isn't it. <laughs> All right. So we talked about that. Oh, okay. So I try not to say this in the pro section of, um, this video. So I was kind of like, mm. so. They will, so for social workers, they will pay for you to go back to school, but you have to wait a year. 
for me, I feel like that's a con because why do I have to wait a whole year before you pay for me to go back to school? Um, a lot of other professions, well, employers, um, I think for my current employer, I think um, they will reimburse you for as long as it goes back to your start date. So they'll they'll do tuition reimbursement and um, you know pay for your school for you as long as as long as your enrollment date um, coincides with your start date or afterwards, they'll pay. So that kind of caught me off guard, um, and I was not aware of that when I um, started working for the VA because I left my employer who was already doing tuition reimbursement. I was already in my doctoral program. And then I came there and I was like, wait, I have to wait a whole year before I can, um, before y'all will pay for me to go back to school. I'm like, by then I'll be almost halfway done. Like, I don't want to wait a year. So, sorry y'all, excuse that loud truck. <laughs> but that's something to think about. You know, if you're in, can you wait to work there and wait a whole year? Um, you know, and they'll pay for your school. Are you in school right now? And you're like, I don't want to wait for that. Like, I want to use my tuition reimbursement. Another option is you could work full time for the VA, and maybe work part time somewhere where they will they will um, provide tuition reimbursement. That, but that's just something to think about. For some people, that's not even an issue, but just something I want you all to think about, be aware of. Because, like I said, I did not know. Um, and also, too, I have a really good friend who works for a, a VA. And sometimes they do not advertise. Oh my goodness, I am going to leave it at the top of this video. Um, and I forgot to write it down, it just came to me. But I'm gonna leave it at the top of the, I'm, I'm going to leave the, the correct title at the top of this video. But some VAs, if you um, apply there and you get off the position, they will um, repay your loans, okay? Um, and I, it's a, some type of acronym, right? You know, the VA, the military, it's all acronyms, okay? I was in the military, so I can say that it's acronyms. <laughs> it's some type of acronym, and I'm gonna leave it up there. I'm gonna leave it up on the video, and I'm gonna leave a link down below. But they will, um, some of the positions, some of the, like, the critically manned positions, they will um, reimburse, they'll pay for your loans. But please stay on top of that and be in, if you see that in the um, job, descript job description, screenshot that and ask about that because unfortunately sometimes if they can get away with it then they might get away with not being able to do that um i will say my friend had a hard time asking about that because she was like wait aren't y'all supposed to be doing this and doing that and she they kind of want to keep it under the rugs but you know they're trying to save money but hey if it's advertised and if it's something that they said hey we will do this if you come work for us then they, they need to honor the word right just make sure you have your docu documentation squared away, screenshot it, inquire about it, okay? Even if you want to inquire about it after the interview. Like, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't talk about that during the interview. <laughs> I would, that's an HR question, so, you know, but definitely inquire about that. So, some positions, they will um, repay your loans for you. Um, and like I said, you have to wait a whole year for them to um, pay for you to go to school. And also, lastly, so transfers. So, your job can transfer. Well, there's a couple things with that. Your job can transfer, but but you have to make sure that whatever VA you're transferring to, they have an opening, right? So I did not know that. So that was one reason why I wanted to work for the VA because my husband's in the military and I'm like, okay, if he has orders somewhere, I know there's gonna be a VA because there's gonna be a lot of military there, right? But one thing I, I found out working um, for the VA is, yeah, you can transfer, but you have to make sure that there is a space for you. There's a position there for you available. So just to make sure that, just to make sure that if you want to transfer, that there is a position available for you um, at that VA. I feel like now though, everywhere is hiring. So if you were interested in transferring, it shouldn't be an issue, but just think about that because sometimes we think it's so easy. And also the transferring, the, the paperwork, sometimes it takes a while. There was someone who I had um, took her position. She transferred her husband to the military and they still had her in the system and she was gone for a while. So sometimes that can take, take a little while for that transfer to complete you know, the process. Um, but that is it for the pros and cons of being a VA social worker. I'm pretty sure I might have left some stuff out, <laughs> but I tried my best not to. I tried to write this down and really, really think. I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. Um, Please leave comments down below if you have any questions. Please feel free to leave um, questions, comments, concerns, anything that you might want to add, something I forgot, anything. I respond to y'all. I don't bite. Please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I will see y'all later. Thanks for watching.